Have you seen her? I have. She used to queue up here on Thursdays with her eyes dark like empty shopping bags, heavy from a lack of sleep circling her vision. When worry is a deafening train screaming through her mind, it's hard to hear anything else. When your thoughts echo with panic every time a blocked phone number rings through, overwhelmed with bills unpaid and letters of payment overdue, they would litter her letterbox. But she would speak a storm of vows to never let this happen again. But she's grown up with IOUs and you only know what you know, so she sinks deeper into the blue to swim with loan sharks, to pay for an overdraft, and they can smell desperate and helpless from miles away. A credit trail of final notice, titled in blood red. Families like hers are a living, feeding frenzy. But there is no grace in these red letters, just a building of bills towering over her, a buildup of anxiety terrorizing her mind so to silence it, she'd just chuck them in the bin because she hated how it made her feel lesser than, lesser than normal, lesser than average, lesser than good mother, less good, less mother, lesser stolen hope, less broken faith, less taken joy, less. She told me that she can't remember the sound of her own laugh, that there is no rest in sleep, just numbers that don't add up. They always end in deficit and in lack and she gives so much of her energy, silencing her tears so her kids don't hear the arguments or the words possessed with malicious spirits that he reached out for to cope. Some nights they would sit heavy on his breath as he would try his best not to succumb to the pressure of being this deep, this stuck. She said he's always been a hard worker and I know this because I've seen his hands calloused with duty and sacrifice during the day there's a mix of dirt and concrete tightly packed under his fingernails. And at night, his hands are black from the roadworks and under the table odd job. Anyone could see that these two love their kids, but she said even sharks can look like dolphins in the dark. And even a curse can sound like a blessing when both options look like dead end streets with one way in and no way out. When poverty is a poor mindset, stealing at one's ability to make a house a home. There's no room for hope because it's overcrowded with guilt and shame. Too many New Zealand families are left to feel alone. But things will be different because the next time you see her and you ask her how it all changed, she'll tell you it started with just an ordinary person who dared to care enough to be liked, a total stranger who spoke a language that rung of love. You, you with eyes full of faith, helped see them through, saw what they could not. You who gave voice when powerlessness and stress silenced their ability to speak, you spoke up, a lighthouse. You were a part of the lifeline in the sea of chaos and shark infested waters, in need of a miracle, a signpost pointing to truth, that God is still restoring all things new and full, healing, joyful, speaking, faithful, vision, hopeful. And sometimes we just need to know that hope is just around the bend, to be reminded that we are not alone and we are not forgotten. This is a modern day miracle, lovingly and beautifully unfolding for her, her family, our families and our country. And it all starts with having eyes to see and ears to hear. So have you seen her? Because I have. And I trust that you do too.